Long after the heat of the moment, I pull off the highway in rural Portugal and glance at the Bugatti Chiron center console. As the engine cools and the carbon silicon carbide brake rotors start to dissipate heat, the onboard computer's telemetry reveals some staggering figures, a peak speed of 377 km per hour, do the math, and that's 234 miles per hour, with the quad turbocharged W16 squeezing a max of 1,466 horsepower at 6,691 revolutions per minute. Did I just drive car or fly a plane? The mind-boggling brain shuffle of Bugatti's latest land rocket cannot be understated, even when placed in context against the now-defunct Vrun. In ultimate super sport trim, the brand produced a stunning 1,200, metric, horsepower. The Chiron's leap to 1,500 ponies required considerable development, testing, and re-engineering. That exhaustive process saw significant challenges, even late in the game. Consider the high-speed testing incident in South Africa, despite extensive test bench work, Real-world driving revealed that the immense exhaust heat was melting the rear bumper and nearly igniting the car. The solution, it turns out, was to add a duct so airflow from the underbody could channel through and diffuse the heat. Hashtag, number 1500 horsepower problems. And then there's that speed run. The shockingly brief but immensely intense burst of acceleration that sends my steed hurtling towards the horizon on a seemingly unstoppable tire. Thanks of the automatically lowered ride height and aggressive downforce, the car stays firmly planted on the road. I, predictably, run out of room all too soon and have to punch the brakes, returning to St. Nara speeds. But when I later learn of the 377 km per hour speed, the figure becomes seared into my brain. The Chiron was still pulling hard at that speed, suggesting it has far greater reserves than the published top speed of 420 km per hour, or 261 miles per hour, dash and in fact, it does. As Bugatti President Wolfgang Derheimer emphasizes, the car is electronically limited to